This video will show the advanced structure drawing options in the Structure Editor on STN Next. If you have watched our video on Structure Editor Basics, you already learned how to draw simple structures including stereochemistry, how to use shortcuts, variables, R groups, repeating units and unspecified bonds, how to define the number of carbon atoms in a generic IQ group, and how to prevent ring fusion and lock atoms against further substitution. In this example, I want to search for substances derived from methotrexate. So I'm going to draw methotrexate first via its registry number. Over there, clicking on the button will then draw the structure automatically and I can go ahead and modify the structure as needed. First of all, I would like to change this moiety here on the right side to be optionally substituted at this carbon atom or at this one. So I'm deleting the bond, moving this a bit around. I can use this lesser tool to do this move it a bit away and now I need this a second time. So I'm using my keyboard with Control C and Control V to copy and paste the structure. Now I have two fragments and can add those two fragments to an R group. Before I do this, I need to define the attachment points on these fragments. I can do this with this Fn button. And as the second attachment point, I'm going to choose the carbon atom right in the middle here. I'm not insisting on the stereochemistry, so I'm going to flatten this bond. Now I have my fragments and the attachment points assigned and can define my R group. We have R1 selected and as we now have fragments drawn with the corresponding attachment points, the fragments ca caption here is enabled. We can select both fragments and draw R1 a substituent to the nitrogen. When I hover over R1, I see also the fragments highlighted that are included in R1. I can also assign multiple attachment points within one fragment. This is very useful, for example, to draw fragments that can be part of a ring. So I'm going to define fragments uh, that could substitute this carbon atom here. To make the structure a bit more general, I'm going to set all these bonds to unspecified bonds first and now would like to draw the fragments. So I'd like to have the additional options instead of the pure carbocycle to have a lactame or a lactone. So I can draw the amide group as well as the ester group. I'm going to assign the attachment points to at each fragment and you see that this now moves from 1 to 2. To include those fragments now within the ring, I'm selecting R2 and my fragments over here. As soon as I draw R2, you will also see that in the ring there are numbers so that you can see in which direction those fragments will be included in the ring. When I substitute R2 with one of those fragments here, you will have the option of a seven-membered ring. So 
to have still the six membered ring, I'm going to use a repeating unit here and set this to zero to one. Click apply and now I can still have a six membered ring even if R2 is one of those fragments. Uh, as I said, I also would like to have the carbocycle carbo as an option. I need to add a C atom as is to R2 as well. So now when I hover over R2, you see that it can be one of those two fragments as well as a carbon atom. Maybe you would now want to change this bond to be optionally substituted to one of those carbon atoms, just to have a bit more variability where those fragments are. To do this, we can remove this bond and use the variable attachment points feature. When you have your substituent drawn on the side, you can then pull all the bonds from one atom to the others. Instead of this methyl group here, I would also like to allow other IQ groups. In the basic structure editor training video, we've also seen how to define a generic IQ group a bit further. So when we have our AK group drawn here, we can right click on that node and specify the amount of carbon atoms within the alkyl group. The group can still be branched, but can only consist out of carbon and hydrogen. That's why within these element counts, I can only define the number of carbon atoms. And I want to set this to a range from one to five carbon atoms. Click on add so that you see this on the right hand side here and then you can apply and we'll see in the background that we now have highlighted the element count carbons from one to five. Further, I'm not insisting of this exact heterocycle but would allow for some variation at this position too. So I'm going to remove the whole heterocycle and add a generic heterocycle instead. Clicking on this HY node, we can now also define element counts but have some further options to select for the elements. So we can say we would like to have the nitrogens in a range from two to six, click on add, and maybe also define that there could be one oxygen, but not more, add. You could also define the exact number of elements or a minimum number of elements. Click on apply and then you see in the background again that this is applied to your node. You can also exclude specific atoms by, for example, setting sulfur to exactly zero. In the generic definitions, we also have options to select saturation. So I'm going to set this to an unsaturated heterocycle. We can also say that this should be a polycyclic one. We could here also more generically or more broadly say how many heteroatoms should be in the ring and how many carbon atoms should be in the ring. If I don't want to specify a specific range, I can also say more or less than seven. Here you would also find the Marcouche attributes. If you are interested in Marcouche searching, please feel free to contact us for further training. The non-hydrogen counts are very nice to define the number of attachments we would like to have on this ring or at any other node. So here we can specify how many substituents shall be there 
without defining any type of substitution. In this case, I'd like to define the non-hydrogen counts with minimum three. This means that additionally to the substituent that I've drawn, I would want to have two more substituents. Click apply and we can close this. Hovering over the HY, we will now see on the right hand side our selection. Before we now submit the structure for our search, it is very important to check the node and bond definitions. By default, a drawn chain will only be a chain bond. Let's have a look at these two fragments. This bond is highlighted to be a chain bond at the moment. However, this doesn't make sense as we would like to have these fragments included in a ring. So we definitely need to change this bond type. This can be done by right click on the bond. And here we see the selection for bond type and can say this has to be part of a ring. You will also find bond values where you can define bonds to be exact or normalized, exact or normalized. Please let us know if you like to learn more about this and we will be happy to schedule a structure or substance search training with you. The second way to define the substitution at the heterocycle would be not using the non-hydrogen count, so I change this back to any, but to draw the A variables as substituents. When we now hover over this bond, you see that this will be exact or normalized. Normalization would, for example, appear in tautomerization. However, you wouldn't find a double bonded oxygen as a ketone. So we would have to set this to unspecified bonds to allow also for double bonds. And the A is currently only a chain node. So here again, we need to select the node, right click on the A and change the node type to allow for ring or chain node. Click apply and OK. Additionally to the variability we've just applied, it's also possible to draw fragments aside from the structure without defining the connection point. So let's say we would like to have a trifluoromethyl group included anywhere in that structure. Then we can draw this next to the structure without defining the attachment. However, this will require that this fragment is in the structure of the same component. So when we submit the search like this, We will find structural hits where we have this as part of our hit structure. What you won't find are substances where this fragment is in another component. If you would like to retrieve, for example, salts with a trifluoromethyl group, but not the group as part of this component, you would have to submit separate structures. So we will remove the fragment from here, upload the structure again, and draw the trifluoromethyl group in a separate structure, upload this and we can now combine both structures with Boolean operators. 
this will retrieve quite more substances than before. When we would like to see only the additional ones, we can search L6, not L2. And here you will see on the one hand that the structural fragment can now overlap with the other structure. So here, this is actually part of the AK group. That's why we didn't retrieve this with the structure search where we had this included in the same window, in the same structure. Here is the same. So this is part of the IQ group. And here we also see the trifluoromethyl group as part of a separate component. In addition to the structure drawing basics, you have now learned how to draw fragments and include them in a R group, how to draw variable points of attachments at rings, how to specify generic heterocycles in the node attributes, how to define substitution via non-H attachments, or drawing the A node, and how you can combine two structural fragments with each other in two different ways. Mm -hmm.